The deep state has the intelligence community, which we addressed last week, under the guise of keeping us safe from Islamism and communism and all the rest. And as we showed last week, that's a bunch of baloney, right? They, they're not keeping us safe from anything. In fact, they are going to eventually be targeting you. And it's not speculation. They have told us that. If you look at the leadership of all the deep state organizations, what you find is they all come out of the Council on Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, the Bilderberg Group, the uh, Skull and Bones Society, the Bilderberg, all these uh, weirdo, disgusting organizations that hate America, hate freedom, and hate God. They also act very much like a giant criminal enterprise. So in this episode of Behind the Deep State, we are going to go through some of the many, many crimes perpetrated by these deep state intelligence agencies so that you can get a sense of not just who they are, but the means that they use, right? And, and there's this idea that the ends justify the means, right? And, and, you know, as I mentioned last week, there's plenty of decent people who work in these intelligence agencies, patriotic, they love God, they love the Constitution, uh, but they never make it very high. And the reason why is obvious, right? The deep state has completely taken control of the so-called intelligence community, and they have weaponized it against the American people and against the current president, Donald Trump. So if you don't know all that, go back and watch last week's episode of Behind the Deep State. Today, I want to talk about some of their crimes. And just to, to give you a brief overview, you've got torture, you've got mass murder, you've got assassinations, you've got regime change, you've got kidnapping, you've got gun running, you've got drug trafficking, and you have illegal spying, not just on people all over the world, but even against people in the United States. So let's start with the obvious one, torture. Torture is a crime under both state and federal law, and yet we know for a fact that the deep state has been torturing people all over the world. Some of the methods that we know they've been using to torture people, waterboarding, beating, binding in contorted stress positions, hooding, deafening noise, sleep deprivation, sleep disruption to the point of hallucinations, deep deprivation of food, deprivation of drinks, withholding care for wounds, walling, sexual humiliation, extreme heat or cold, confinement in coffin-like boxes, slapping, medically unnecessary rectal rehydration, rectal fluid resuscitation, rectal feeding, threats to harm children, threats to sexually abuse mothers, and that just scratches the surface, okay? They're doing this with your money, in your name, all over the world uh, to help them torture people without getting in trouble. They don't like to do it on U.S. soil because they know they might all get arrested and thrown in prison where they belong. So they set up a secret network of secret prisons all over the world. They had secret prisons in Lithuania, in Poland, in Romania, in Afghanistan, in Thailand, and on and on. How do they get people to torture? Well, we had a really interesting case out of Italy in 2009. An Italian court convicted 23 CIA agents in absentia because they didn't show up to face trial like a bunch of cowards. Uh, they were convicted of kidnapping an Egyptian man, a dissident named Hassan Mustafa Omar Nasser. And uh, it, it's like a terrible uh, B movie. And uh, they basically grabbed this guy, Hassan, off the streets of Milan, put a hood over his head, shoved him into a van and uh, flew him off to Egypt so that he could be interrogated and tortured. Well, they um, they used electroshock torture. They used uh, genital torture. They left the guy permanently disabled, all to supposedly get intelligence. Well, it turns out they didn't really get any intelligence, so eventually they let the guy go. Um, and then when they do have people who would be, you know, gold mines of supposed intelligence, people like, I don't know, Bar uh, not Barack Obama, what's his name? Uh, Osama bin Laden, oh yeah, Mr. Terrorist Supremo, right, number one, uh, what do they do? They put a bullet in his head. Hmm, interesting. So they'll torture some random Egyptian guy off the streets of Milan with electroshock torture and genital torture, but then you get the most valuable source of intelligence in the world, supposedly, Osama bin Laden, and you kill him. Okay, something isn't adding up here, right? You don't need to be a uh, intelligence expert to know that this makes no sense. Uh, they also like to assassinate people. Uh, we know this because they've been busted many, many times. Uh, the church committee actually found very much evidence of deep state intelligence community involvement in assassinations. Um, they were using all kinds of tools, too, that would make it almost impossible for people to realize that their victims were even assassinated. Check out this video from a uh, church committee hearing. This was in the U.S. Senate of uh, one of the tools they used to murder people without leaving any evidence that it was even a murder. Check this out. Pistol, uh, fire, the dart. 
Yes, it does, Mr. Chairman, and a special one was developed which potentially would be able to uh, enter the target without perception. But also the toxin itself would not appear in the autopsy? Yes, so that uh, there was no, no way of perceiving that the, uh, the target was him. Have you brought with you um, some of those devices which would have enabled the CIA to use this poison for, we have indeed, for killing people? The brown thing at the top is obviously the site. It works by electricity. There's a battery in the handle, and it fires a small dart. And the dart itself, when it strikes the, the, the uh, target, um, does the uh, target know that he's, about, he's been hit and about to die? A special one was developed which potentially would be able to uh, enter the target without perception. As a murder instrument, that's about as efficient as you can get, isn't it? It, it, it is a weapon, a very serious weapon. All right, so using an ice dart to shoot ice an ice dart into somebody with poison that'll give them a heart attack that wouldn't even show up in an autopsy. How many people have died from heart attacks who were actually murdered by the deep state's intelligence community, so-called? I bet you it was a lot, and we probably will never know how many. Uh, they also just like to murder people by dropping bombs from drones from the sky. Uh, we know for a fact that many thousands of people have been murdered in this way. And, and I call it mass murder. And some of you are like, well, you know, it's not murder. We're, we're just killing terrorists and suspected militants. You know what? Until they're convicted in a court of law, they're not terrorists, right? Um, in America, we, we have historically believed in this thing called um, innocent until proven guilty. And we used to have a due process whereby you would have to charge somebody with a crime and then you would take them uh, to a trial and then you would present the evidence and then the jury would have to say, yep, that evidence was pretty convincing. In fact, it was convincing beyond a reasonable doubt. Now you're guilty. Then you're a terrorist, okay? Then you can be subject to the death penalty. That's not what's happening here, right? None of these thousands of people who've been murdered with these drone bombings have had a day in court. In fact, they've never even been charged with a crime. Uh, we'll see in a moment, they murder people based on pretty much nothing, right? Thousands of people. Check out these two American children who were murdered by the deep state intelligence community's drones, right? Uh, both of them born in the United States, little girl, little boy. And what was their crime? Being related to a guy who supposedly had used his free speech to promote Al Qaeda. That was their crime. And they were blown up, blown to little bits by the Obama regime, by the intelligence community, so-called, uh, as part of the deep state's so-called terror war. This is not okay, folks. I'm sorry, but this is not okay. Uh, we also know from the book um, The Way of the Knife by Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Mark Mazzetti that the CIA has got assassination squads and they've been running around the world murdering people at will. Uh, no trial, no charges, no nothing. Just some goober from the NSA or the CIA, some intelligence agency works for the Council on Foreign Relations most of the time, just says, yep, knock that guy out. And so they go take him out. Right? Um, and, and mind you, we are now at the point where these criminals actually brag about their crimes. Uh, I want to show you a guy called Michael Hayden. He ran the CIA. He ran the NSA. He was also a member in good standing of the Council on Foreign Relations. He's also been an attendee at the Bilderberg meetings. This guy is as deep state as deep state can be. And watch him bragging about how they murder people based on their metadata. Check this out. You can find out all these things David just said about me, about David, about anyone in this audience. That is a function of operational capability. I'd like you to talk about whether you're comfortable with that operational capability. If so, why? And how often is it used in the ways that David described? Yeah, first, first of all, David's description of what you can do with metadata and quoting a mutual friend, Stuart Baker, is absolutely correct. Okay. We kill people based on metadata. Uh, we also know that they perpetrate false flag attacks. It's not enough to just kill people uh, in assassinations. They also perpetrate false flag attacks. How do we know? Well, because we have the documents to prove it. So uh, there was actually a, a study by the Human Rights Watch. They found that almost every high-profile domestic terror case in America since the September 11th attacks featured the, quote, 
direct involvement of government agents and informants. Uh, in some cases, almost the entire quote-unquote terrorism plot from start to finish was actually led and financed by government operatives. So they find some uh, mentally challenged idiot and they say, hey, wouldn't it be fun to blow something up? Oh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to do that. Here, have some bombs, right? Total false flag fake terrorism. Uh, they've been doing this for a long time. It's nothing new, right? Um, decades ago, the uh, Department of Defense and the CIA were planning fake terrorist attacks in the United States and in other countries um, to help drum up uh, pro-war sentiment. They wanted to go overthrow a foreign government. So we have Operation Northwoods, and then the CIA had Operation Mongoose, where they were plotting to blow up bombs in my hometown, Miami, Florida. They were plotting to sink a ship full of Cuban refugees. They were plotting a uh, bomb attack. They plotted uh, taking down an airplane full of people so that they could uh, justify an invasion of a foreign country. And that's who these people are, right? Uh, and you know they, they say it's to keep us safe from communism and Islamism. Well, we talked about that last week, absolutely not true. Uh, they've been caught drug trafficking over and over and over again for decades. And don't take my word for it, right? Watch this video of the head of the DEA at the time, Robert Bonner, talking about how he busted the CIA importing one ton of cocaine into the United States on an airplane in collaboration with the Venezuelan government. Check this out. Because of her controversial drug stand, President Clinton fired his Surgeon General. But there was more disturbing news in the fall of 1993 when a report revealed that the government itself may have been running drugs. The head of the DEA at the time, Robert Bonner, said that a ton of pure cocaine worth hundreds of millions of dollars had been smuggled into the United States. And he blamed the CIA, saying the agency had joined the Venezuelan National Guard in drug smuggling. Let me understand what you're saying. A ton of cocaine was smuggled into the United States of America by the Venezuelan National Guard? Well, the... In cooperation with the CIA? That's what, that's exactly what appears to have happened. Uh, in 2014, the Mexican newspaper El Universal ran a, an explosive investigative story where they found out that the U.S. government was basically partners with the Sinaloa cartel. They were allowing them to ship drugs into this country with impunity, no prosecutions, as long as they gave intelligence on their rivals. How nice to have the U.S. government eliminating your competition for you. Nice job if you can get it. Right? Um and uh, on the drug dealing, watch John Kerry talk about the U.S. government drug dealing. Check this out. I mean, we were complicitous as a country in narcotics traffic at the same time as we're spending countless dollars in this country to try to get rid of this problem. It's mind boggling. I don't know if we've got the worst intelligence system in the world. I don't know if we've got the best and they knew it all and just overlooked it. But no matter how you look at it, something's wrong. Something is is really wrong out there. And then what do they do with all this money they're making from their drug deals, right? They, they've been doing it out of Afghanistan. They've been doing heroin. They've been doing it out of Vietnam. They've been doing it out of Mexico. They've been doing it out of Colombia. Drug trafficking everywhere, right? What do they do with all that money? Well, they use it to fund black operations. You know, you don't want to ask Congress if we can please have permission to overthrow a U.S. ally and murder his family. Uh, let's just do that with drug money that we made from sneaking cocaine into the country, okay? Uh, we know for a fact they've overthrown at least seven or eight governments, probably many, many more. Uh, they fund terror groups, right? We know they were funding al-Qaeda in Syria and in Libya. Where do they get the money for all this? Well, some of it, the, the criminals in Congress give to them, but a lot of it they get from drug trafficking. They got caught gun running. Who could forget Operation Fast and Furious? And then when they got caught, they said, oh, we were just investigating, right? We were just investigating something. We wanted to see what would happen to those guns. No, they weren't, right? We found out that the guy they were investigating was already on the FBI's payroll. They are lying to you. The purpose of the gun running operation, Operation Fast and Furious, Operation Gun Runner, they called it, was to make the Second Amendment look bad, right? Send a bunch of, uh, and, and as a side benefit, to give a bunch of weapons to their cronies in the drug cartels like Sinaloa that we talked about earlier. So that was a, a brief overview of some of the crimes of the deep state intelligence agencies. And uh, stay tuned because next week we're going to be looking at more of the criminal activities 
of these so-called intelligence community agencies, uh, including domestic spying on the United States, massive violations of our rights, uh, enlisting a, a journalists in their disinformation operations, trying to brainwash and deceive the American people. Uh, some of the different things they've been doing around the world, including helping to create the European Union, mind control, and much, much more. So stay tuned for next week's episode of Behind the Deep State. Make sure you like, subscribe, share. Um, you know, YouTube is doing everything they can to suppress us. So if you want this information to get out, you're going to have to email it to your people. You're going to have to send it to them on social media. Do your thing. Help us get this important information out so that we can expose and stop these criminals in our government, in the deep state, from enslaving America and from committing these horrible, horrible crimes. I'm Alex Newman, your host behind the deep state. Thank you and God bless.